Good evening. You are listening to a Rattlegen Broadcasting Premier Podcast Alternative Commentary. I'm your host, the mandated reporter, and frankly, I'm mortified, Mr. Mark Rattlegen. And tonight, we are providing alternative commentary because we can't possibly be as bad as these guys for Jake Paul <laughs> versus Ben Askren. Brought to you by God Help Us All, The Triller Fight Club. Yuck. I am joined by the man who was with me the last time Triller Fight Club had a pay-per-view, and it was act two actual boxers. They were past their prime, but that's okay. Ladies and gentlemen from the Superblog team up and the uh, Super Satellite Superhero Satellite. Come Thank on. You. Get Superhero. this right here. I've been asleep most of the night. Uh, <laughs> Superhero Satellite Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, that dulcet, towns you, dulcet tones you've just heard are Chris Bailey. Chris Bailey. Chris Bailey. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? I am doing good, and we're right into the heat of things. We're right out of the gate. Ben Askren making his way towards the ring right now in what I would call a controversial night. Mark Radlich. Of professional boxing here. Holy oh, cow. my God. So just real quick. So this is Ben Askren's first professional boxing match ever. He comes from a grappling and wrestling uh, background. He was the Bellator champion at one point. He uh, he washed out of the UFC. Uh, he got knee in the he got a, he got KO'd with a flying knee on June 6, July 6, 2019 by Jorge Masvidal in a glorious glorious loss. <laughs> and then um, he got cut after main eventing with Damian Maya uh, where he was rear naked choked in the third round in Singapore. So yeah, this guy got like he's got like 19 wins, 6 KO, 6 by submission, 7 by decision. I mean, this guy's an accomplished uh, accomplished fighter here. So I mean, yeah, you yeah. know when it comes when it comes to Jake Paul, he's got his work cut out for him here. Well, that's the thing. Ben Askren was known in Bellator for doing a lot of just laying on guys and smothering them. Grappling is his game. So he he's not really a known striker. Um Jake Paul, on the other hand, this is his third professional boxing match, and and everyone like you know likes to goof on Jake Paul, but he's actually been training for a couple of years now. Like he's taking it as seriously as one can, you know, at his age, doing what he's doing. I know everyone knows him as the YouTube star and the brother of Logan Paul, who was just at WrestleMania, but he yeah. has had two actual prof- well, one and a half actual professional fights. He took on some such person and and Eason Gibb on uh, one of the Boo Boo Andre cards right before the pandemic last year on January 30th, 2020 on DAZN in Miami, Florida. Uh, Robert Winfrey and I actually did alternative commentary for that. And then on the Tyson card, he fought, he near, damn near killed Nate Robinson. And I yep. believe that's, that's what brought us to this fight, Chris Bailey, is that uh, after that fight and everyone was like, you killed poor Nate Robinson, who clearly was not ready for that jelly. And... <laughs> <laughs> and Ben Askren was like, you know, because Ben Askren's a huge Twitter troll. Just the worst. <laughs> Absolutely. And we right now, we've got Jake Paul making his way towards the ring with a giant black and white robot, believe it or not. It's, uh, of course he it, is. It's very hard to describe. Uh, but listen, you're, you talk about who in the hell is Jake Paul. This guy's, with, you know, he's a YouTuber, social media influencer, pro boxer with two and O, oh, undefeated Mark Radlich. Of course, he's a rapper. The dude has got a net worth of $11.5 million. He's just going to add to that here tonight. Twenty point three. Yeah, Ben uh, Askren. Million like, subscribers. Holy cow. Ben, ben like, Askren. This, this every, well, everyone saw that Tyson fight and, and saw where yep. this was going with Triller and was like, give me a piece of that pie. And look, I'm a h- hardcore capitalist and corporatist. I get it. That That's not my problem here. My problem is, could this have been any more of a garbage production tonight? Oh, no, definitely cow. not. The 87 start- guys they have on commentary. I want I wish I had zillions of dollars so I could buy Triller and fire Snoop Dogg. I would just hire him and fire him all day long. Pete Davidson well, is useless. They have Pete Davidson. They had Mario Lopez. You name it. You know, the guy in the front row, he's been here. You talk about it. I mean, holy cow. We're looking at the tail of the tape right now. Uh, I think uh, the smart money, if you're a betting man, would probably be on Ben Askren here tonight. But uh, you never know what's going to happen here. You know, I mean, like I said, 
Ben Askren, you know, a professional fighter, and you would think, okay, well, the professional fighter should beat the celebrity boxer. On the other hand, in Ben theory. Askren's had his shit pushed in. Like on Oz. Yeah, you're dark. <laughs> you are dark. <laughs> I mean, if, if, look, in any, if, if, you're, if you're listening to this, you know, and you've been watching this Triller Fight Club, and any one of the 97 musical performances that went an hour and a half apiece, go watch Jorge Masvidal versus Ben Askren. It'll take you 30 seconds. It'll be the best 30 seconds you spend watching him get his head neat off. Ben Askren, ben Askren looking a little bit out of shape here tonight. And look who is in the middle of that ring doing the formal ring introductions. It's WCW's own Michael Buffer. Yes. Yeah, so wow. he, he's Hopefully also he gets announced, their names right. He's also announced boxing for years and years. And years. I That's know that. I'm does. just joking. I'm hoping he's – hopefully he doesn't call someone uh, Brett Clark. It would be great. <laughs> Please, Michael Buffer, get this right. Oh, my God. Yeah, Ben Askren not taking this seriously at all. Not taking uh, Jake Paul seriously. Not taking any of this he, seriously. And why should he? He's getting paid. He's not even in ring shape here. No, no. He's, he's looking like fucking me at this point. Like, just, you know, just, just <laughs> dad botting it all the way. Is Pete Davidson actually smoking a blunt up there in that ring announcer's table? I, it, I think he actually is. I, I believe tell- that they are consuming the cannabis S- as Snoop, we speak. Snoop Dogg and Pete Davidson in this entire broadcast team, minus Al Bernstein, who is I'm embarrassed for, is the reason why the Red Chinese will win someday. It's ridiculous. <laughs> All right, they are finally facing off in the center of the ring, and we are finally... This, po- th- this thriller... Fight Club broadcast has been going on since uh, the end of WrestleMania last week. It, it's it's been going on forever. I have slept, had a birthday party, done my taxes, and there's been a new pandemic. And then we came out of the pandemic in the time it took yep. to get this underway. We're right out but, of money, but we are underway finally. Ben Askren, Funky Ben Askren versus Jake Paul. Jake Paul comes storming out of the gate, takes over the center oh. of the ring. Forcing ben you, are, on the outside. You, you are a little bit ahead of mine, so yeah, let yeah. me get my stream up to date here. One moment. Let me update my stream. All right. Keep Jake Paul going. coming out jabbing. Ben Askren content to play defense. Jake Paul jabs to the body. I mean, so far it's a boxing was- match. <laughs> uh, Jake Paul, how's, how's he doing so far? Yeah, I'm just updating my stream here. Ben Askren kind of went after him a little bit, and then they tied up. Um, just sort of threw a, like a lazy paw out there. Not uh, Ben here Askren, not live. showing a lot of boxing acumen. It looks like Askren chasing him around here, and now he's got him on the leaning up against the ropes. Is that where you are right now as well? Still a little bit ahead. Just, just, we'll, just okay. it's okay. We'll keep going. Right. All right, Jake Paul with a bit of a hook there. All right, straight left. Right to the body, and they tie up. And Ben Askren tags him along the sides like a walrus. (laughs) Jake Paul doesn't look bad in here. He doesn't look like he doesn't belong here. So that's one of the things i got to say about this one. Even though Askren is, uh, you know, sadly out of shape here in this match. I can't believe... You know, with the money he's getting for this particular fight, that uh, he didn't come in better condition. I mean, look, they they were selling weed at the beginning of this show. Nobody gives a shit. And Jake Paul swings and knocks down Ben Askren. Jake Paul thought it was all over. He figured, you know, Ben Askren's not getting up again. But, oh, he beats the count. Ben Askren ready to go. Ben Askren yep. now looking a little bit serious. Like, hey, I might actually lose this thing and be totally embarrassed. Man, he- he popped his head off with that one, to be quite honest with you. Oh, Jake you Paul shitting really me? They just waved it off. Unbelievable. Can you believe this, Mark Radlich? Like, holy cow, Ben Askren ben once again getting a staggering defeat on live pay-per-view. Holy cow. Why did this they... could not... How, why did he even call that off, Mark? So did you watch the first fight earlier with a reggaeton guy fought the actual boxer and the boxer at one point looked at the ref like are you ever going to stop this because I'm going to kill this guy and uh, and, uh, I and did, yeah. <laughs> so Jake that Paul one they let go Paul. and I think the corner stopped it at the end of the round this one the ref like you know Ben Askren beats the count and he's ready to go and I guess the ref didn't like what he saw so they stopped it 
let's be fair, man. He took his head off with that shot. I mean, a nice, brutal right hook to the head and just drop Ben Askren like a ton of bricks here. And, well, what do you got to say? I mean, obviously this one was called <laughs> off a little bit too soon, but maybe that's the intention, Mark Radlich. I've wasted my life. <laughs> it is. 2.14 in the morning here in St. John's, <laughs> Newfoundland, and I am loving Jake Paul. You bastard. Thank you I for would like keeping to apologize. me alive with this. I would like to apologize to Chris Bailey for keeping him up all night, keeping him away from his wife and children to watch this <laughs> dreck. Well, listen, I did get to see Frank Mir come, come back to the ring and, you know, lose to Steve Cunningham, and then I got to see the the worst non-low blow in the history of man when it, when it, when it came to... Uh, uh, the, the match between Regis and uh, this Redkin guy or whatever the heck his name was. Redkin, I mean, unbelievable. Yeah. I, yeah, I, heard wow. he fl- I heard he flopped on a phantom punch and then he called it a low blow. There was not even close to being a low blow. It was literally, the, the punch didn't even connect. It was right. a wrist to the side and he, he fell down. He rolled. He held his nuts. He did it all and they called it off and they stretched him out. <laughs> so here's wow, the this, thing this about... Look, so, so here's the thing about Jake Paul. This is nice and all, and if he wants to keep doing, like, garbage celebrity boxing, you know, where Triller soaks people for as much money as they can by putting on 90% concert and 10% maybe boxing, that's yep. fine. I, 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 don't, I don't begrudge him his milking people for money. He certainly got mine tonight. He may never get it again. But, <laughs> like, I, I, I don't begrudge people making money off of stupidity. If no, no, me really... neither. I, I actually enjoy the spectacle of these yeah. particular pay per views. You know what I mean? If well, nothing else, it brings boxing back to the spot, to the forefront. Not in the way that a traditional boxing fan would like to see, of course. Yeah, but my... the spectacle of it all gets people people's asses in the seat. So that's all that matters. My dad was asking me tonight. He's like, "Does boxing ever make mainstream news anymore?" I'm like, "I'm sure this will." But what I was going where I was going with this was if he wants to be like a real boxer, if he wants to get in there with you know guys that are real professional boxers and he wants to get past the sort of celebrity garbage that he does he needs more rounds than this and they talk about this it with is. guys on the come up where they you know they they whip off like five ten knockouts in the first you know two three rounds of every fight they do and then they get in there with you know a mid-range guy to really test them and their coaches all say the same thing and the commentaries talk about the same thing don't be so quick to knock the guy out. Put the work in. You need to learn how to work a long match because you're not always going to be in there with a guy who falls over on one punch. Well, this guy, Ben Askren, certainly fell <laughs> fell over on well, basically yeah. <laughs> one punch. Wow, did he hit the bricks, Mark. I mean, it was a combination there, but, I mean, he really, really took his head off with that hook, man. Unbelievable. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh Oh, if I'm Ben Askren, I never return to a uh, to a professional ring, octagon, <laughs> sandbox, you name it. I ain't showing up there anymore. Holy yeah, I was cow. going to say, gonna say like, if, if whoever is in Ben Askren's life, if you love him, if you love him, delete his Twitter before he find before he gets to another you know device. It's just, just <laughs> delete it now. He doesn't get to be on Twitter anymore. Just just, just go home, live your life. Find something else to do with the rest of your life. Don't do this anymore. Just don't be a, <laughs> don't be a public figure. Just don't. And Jake Paul is going to get the the dollar store world title that they're going to hand him. And you know, lot, lots of lots of folks were looking forward to uh, Jake Paul getting his head knocked off here tonight. And sadly, that did not happen. And you know, he uh, he I, he basically retired a fighter here tonight in Ben Askren. So there you go. What do you what can you say? That's the belt they gave him. Oh, oh my what do you god! Think of that? that thing what do you looks think of like that? that thing looks like you could find it in, like in a cereal box. Yes, sir. That looks like What's something that? I made as a kid. I was going to say that, that looks like something my son would play with as a toy. <laughs> oh my Maybe that's, god! That is really bad, Mark. Holy cow! I wouldn't wear that. To, I wouldn't wear that to my grave. <laughs> hey, god damn! Wow. Does nobody in this company like take boxing seriously at all? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we know the answer to that particular <laughs> question, right? And Holy Ben Askren, uh, they got a shot of him out back. He's laughing. He's joking. He doesn't take any of this serious, not one bit. 
You know, he's got his ladies with him. He's just collecting his paycheck and going home, which is exactly what we thought he would do anyway. So Ben Askren taking a taking a bump here tonight for Jake Paul. Boo you, Ben Askren. All right. Well, I mean, it, it was better than Randy Orton versus The Fiend. Yes, so, it was. Yes, you know, it was. At I, least I, was, I don't, uh, you know I don't mind putting up this broadcast. Oh, and Logan Paul also in the ring with his brother. Look at that. He survived that stunner, Mark Radlich. Impossible. <laughs> I got into an argument with somebody on Twitter about um, about why uh, I didn't like the Kevin Owens Sami Zayn match, and you know we went back and forth about it. It was a, it was a polite discussion, as such can be on Twitter. And at the end of it, I finally was like, "Look, I'm just disappointed he didn't jump off the pirate ship." Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is it so much to ask? Jump off the damn part. Actually, that was a disappointment. That's that's like the uh, the Shane McMahon backflip bump. Oh my God! Can you believe what's going on here? You talk about biased announcing here. We got Snoop Dogg possibly going to hand a blunt to Jake Paul here up in that announce booth. Boom. <laughs> we are is... a long way from the golden age of boxing. We're a well, long way we... from the golden age. Of... We're, we're a long way from fucking golden honey smacks. Somewhere, somewhere, someone is looking at this. Oh my God, this is this is unbelievable. Can you imagine this being coming off? Like even in the even in the nineties, when when boxing was on its downward swing, like it's in you know fall from grace. Mm-hmm. Would you could you possibly believe that it would degenerate this far? Uh no. I I, <laughs> I didn't think there would be this many people collected together that that don't respect boxing at all this is this is basically the professional wrestling of, of boxing right now this is you know this is the new the new format celebrity boxing man and we're I'll, seeing it right here now i'll tell and you it's what making this millions it, it's not it's not all professional wrestling because some professional wrestling actually takes it seriously but do you remember after the great crumble of of wcw and ecw um mtv had a show on for a while for for like a season um Oh gosh! It, it, it had Teddy Hart in it and X Pac, um, and they would wrestle and like set off like fireworks and explosions and stuff. Yeah, it was it was actually in a um, it was actually filmed in like a warehouse setting. Yeah, yeah, you remember that? Yeah, this is that. Th- this is this event. This Triller Fight Club is the boxing version of that. Yeah, that was it. Was called Wrestling Society X. That's I could not remember the name of it. That was done by our good friend, Mr. Kevin Kleinrock. There you go. So, I mean, when you when you talk about the people who were tied up in that, that was that was a production. And if you've seen that, like Mark was saying, holy cow, you talk about the uh, – the um, it was trying to be ECW, WWE all at once with zero, zero budget. And, I mean, they had an exploding <laughs> ring that actually blew up. <laughs> all right, Chris. I don't know what to say. I'm, again, I – how long have we been recording? This whole thing has been has been a, a giant waste of time, but it's also been almost <laughs> <laughs> almost twenty minutes. All right. Well, I hope I hope for for coverage just like this, you can also find the Podsman <laughs> over here in the W two M network. We we gotta we gotta do something. I mean, we gotta put a Grammarly commercial in here or something, or Amazon Music. Hit me up, Mark Radlich. Let's do something. Oh yeah, if you've let's, been... sell, let's put sell some tickets. Uh, oh sure, if you've enjoyed the music of uh, Justin Bieber or. Dabakato. I don't know who any of these people were. People were making a huge deal out of the fact that, like, Ice Cube. Like, I, I dozed off at one point and I woke up and Ice Cube was sitting in a chair rapping, and, the, and people on Twitter were like, you know, like, ooh, Ice Cube is, is rapping. And I'm like, who gives a shit? My God, people get impressed by the stupidest shit. Um, anyway, if you like Ice Cube. And you like Snoop Dogg, and you like Justin Bieber, oh boy, you can check out our link at AmazonMusic.com. That's AmazonMusic.com. I'm um, sorry. Amazon, get Amazon. Oof. Get AmazonMusic.com slash W2M Network. Um, yeah, the next time the Podsmen are doing a wrestling review, it'll be a lot longer than 20 minutes, uh, it'll be Impact Rebellion. Rich Swan versus Kenny Omega in the main event, and that'll be Tuesday, April 27th. Uh, this week on the Rattle of Broadcasting Network, we've got Umbrella Academy Volume 2, Dallas, uh, Comic Stripped, Jiu Jitsu, 
Um, we've got Umbrella Academy Season 2. We'll have another History of Boxing. We'll be wrapping up that series. And then uh, we have two flashback shows for you. One will be on Mortal Kombat Legacy, just in time for the new Mortal Kombat movie, and our uh, review of The Wolverine from 2013. All right. Um, check out all of our WrestleMania coverage in the archives, plus our coverage of Resident Alien, the book, and the show. Uh, and our flashback show for Star Trek Into Darkness, plus just air, just now airing on the network, our Long Road to Ruin re-air of the Spock trilogy, Star Trek the Spock trilogy, with special guest Jason and author Jason Offit. All right, for Chris Bailey, who I've lost via Skype somewhere out there in the Phantom Zone, I'm Mark Rattledge. Be well, be safe, and behave.